What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got an awesome knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the full size Olamic Cutlery Wayfarer. Um, not the Wayfarer 247, I think that's what um, most people are familiar with. Uh, this was the original Wayfarer I believe that started, uh, I'm not sure, I think it was like 2010 to 2013, something like that. Um, Olamic Cutlery makes a lot of models right now, but um, this was the first model that I became familiar with, um, you know, in terms of Olamic Cutlery. I, I saw the very first one I'd, I'd ever seen on Jim Skelton's channel, and I knew that I had to have one, you know, uh, from that point forward. And then I got my hands on that one, and then for whatever reason down the road, I sold it. And um, to this day, it's still one of my most regretful sales. So thanks to um, Mr. Jeff Goodnow. Who, by the way, I'm going to make it easier on you guys. You can follow him on Instagram at GoodnowJeff. I'll let you guys pause that if you need to. But anyways, give him a follow. He deserves a follow. He has provided um, a lot of the content on my channel for the last two to three weeks. And uh, most of his knives are grail knives. So that has really kind of spiced up my channel and uh, given me an opportunity to look at some stuff that I otherwise would not have the opportunity to look at. Um, also, speaking of Jeff and his generosity... Uh, he, uh, offered up his Slim Midi Marauder, this beautiful Slim Midi Marauder, uh, as a giveaway knife on my channel. The moment that I hit 40 patrons, I am currently at 28 patrons. So I need 12 more patrons. Um, it counts even if you join the $1 tier. And once I hit 40, I'm going to open this up as a giveaway to everybody, not just patrons, not just subscriber, uh, subscribers, uh, basically anybody uh, who wants to enter to win this knife. So this is close to a $600 knife um, by Medford. Nice and slim, EDC size, S35VN, titanium scales, very smooth, nice purple and blue hammered finish on there. Brand new, comes with the box, bag, card, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so if that sounds like something you'd like to get your hands on, then just follow the link in the description to my Patreon, read the bold text, and then you can uh, you can decide from there if you want to help out or help me uh, reach my goal. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the review of this beautiful, monstrous knife. Overall length of the full-size Wayfarer coming in at nine and a quarter inches overall. This is a big knife. How about the blade length? From tip to scale... It's, I mean, even from the, the, the peak of the scale, it's over four inches. I mean, it might be right at four inches, but in my light, it, it, it almost looks like it's just a hair over four inches. The actual cutting length is about 3.75 inches. There's a, you know, it doesn't look like it because the blade is so big, but it's actually a substantial finger choil here. So big, big knife. For those of you wondering, uh, comparatively up against the Wayfarer 247, the 247 is about 8.1, 8.2 inches overall, so about the size of an XM18 or a PM2. We'll get to that here in a second. In fact, let's go ahead and start off do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see there exactly how big this thing is. Up next, the PM2, roughly the size of the 247, so you can see here the PM2 coming in at about 8.3 inches overall is also dwarfed by the enormous size of the Wayfarer. I guess they call it the Wayfarer Classic. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Delica. Kind of a meaningless size comparison, but just to do it, as we always do. Seven inches overall on the Spyderco Delica. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have figured out how to operate my phone in 60 frames per second in full HD quality. So this is uh, this is how you're going to um, see uh, knife reviews from now on. I'm really happy to have this figured out finally. Give you an example of the action here. Um, this seems to be a fairly new knife. It doesn't look like Jeff uses it much. From what I remember, it's exactly the same as my other Wayfarer. These aren't quite fall shut, but they are extremely smooth. The detent is nice and clicky, and the firing power is insane due to a couple of things. Um, the length and mass of the blade and this amazing flipper tab. It is a large flipper tab. For some people, that's going to get in the way. But as far as how it's shaped, where you naturally rest your finger, and just the angle that you're pushing naturally, it's not really push button. It's not really light switch. I would say it's more light switch than push button, but it is made to flip. You are not going to fail this knife. Giving it a thumb flick uh, straight up, you know, I can show you there. But down or straight up with the, the actual, uh, your index finger flipping it, um, these knives are made to flip, and they've been notorious for good flipping action for a very long time. 
Um, let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick. Now, this isn't going to be super fair because this is probably one of the heaviest variants. Um, this, these have uh, full titanium scales, and if you're wondering, the liners are also titanium. The pocket clip is titanium. The backspacer is titanium. Um, and on the inside here, you can see if I can get the light on there. Uh, come on. You can see that they're, they're partially jeweled, but they are also not milled out. Um, so they're solid liners. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Woo! 7.8 ounces on this guy. Let's go again. 7.76 ounces. So we're looking at, you know, about seven and three quarter ounces. Uh, that's heavy on this guy, on this guy, but uh, they do get substantially lighter. If you read on their website, the full size Wayfarer can weigh anywhere from like, I might be wrong, five and a half ounces to eight and a half ounces, depending on the build. Um, and that's the big thing with these and with Olamic Cutlery in general. Almost everything that they put out is unique because, and, and I say almost everything because I think there are a few duplicates floating around out there, but um, most of what they put out is unique. It's, it's kind of, you know, they, they kick a whole bunch of stuff to dealers like the, uh, the Buskers and the Swishes and the 247s and they're kind of like pre-made unique custom pieces and then you can buy those. Like if you go over to uh, DLT Trading right now, they have a whole bunch um, and, and there's a lot of other retailers that keep them readily in stock. Um, and those are kind of their, it's weird to categorize a Lamic Cutlery because they definitely have like custom elements of things and they have mid-tech elements of things. I've always looked at a Lamic Cutlery like this. Um, their mid-techs are much, there's more to them than a standard mid-tech. There's a lot more that goes into them. Um, you know, especially when considering all of the different features and all of the different options you have when, um, you know, creating a knife. I mean, they don't, they don't limit you to like cookie cutter builds. You know, they'll divide things, uh, do like special bolsters, special finishes on bolsters, kind of divide up the materials in the way that you want. So in my opinion, there's a lot more that goes into it than a standard um, mid-tech. But then they also absolutely make full custom knives. I've always been impressed by that. I've always been impressed by the attention to detail and the handwork and, and honestly the final product. I mean, what comes out is amazing at the end. So anyways, you know, you, you have those and then on there, on the um, other end, you don't see nearly as many like full size wayfarers like this floating around at dealers anymore. You can find them out there, but not, not usually. These are usually from, from what I understand, uh, knives that you kind of have to uh, request or, you know, if you're looking at um, like Arizona custom knives or if you're looking at, you know, basically a, a um, dealer that deals specifically in custom knives, you might see something like this that was ordered by that retailer. Um, I, I don't know that they have any exclusive way that they do that. That's just from my perspective. I did actually call in or request a, a custom build from them as I was, you know, poking around with the idea of Excalibur. And I'll, I'll give you guys a, you know, a little bit of a hint. Um, there, there are multiple makers that I'm considering for my ultimate Excalibur knife and Olama Cutlery is one of them. Um, so I kicked a uh, build request uh, out to them, um, you know, with uh, the the Wayfarer, the full size Wayfarer in mind, and um, what they came back was is my build could range anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars, depending on how detailed I want to go with it. Now, considering what my build is, I was really impressed with that because everything else that I've seen out there, like getting exactly what I want, is going to cost me at least fifteen hundred dollars. So, and I've heard that about Alamic Cutlery is that you know they they can build you know better than mid-tech and roughly custom pieces for substantially less than you'll find with other makers. And they offer an, an insane amount of options for their knives, like ridiculous. I honestly, you should go, you should check out their website. It's real. I spent a lot of time looking at galleries and pictures of past builds. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I don't even know what thunderstorm Kevlar is, you know, but stuff like that. It was really, really cool. So anyways, we're at nine minutes now and we haven't really talked a whole lot about this specific knife, but it's what I'm trying to let you guys know is, is that this one's really heavy, but it was built with solid titanium scales. Um, there are options to have like carbon fiber and lightened up titanium and flat or contour. There's so many different options that the weight can vary dramatically. Mine was G10 in titanium and I remember it weighed like 5.75 ounces. It felt incredibly light for how big it was. They also have mini blade options. This particular one is a sheep's cliff blade. You can see kind of um, combination Warncliffe sheep's foot 
really, really awesome blade. I mean, this is, as far as like a working blade goes, that's, you know, uh, from a Lamic Cutlery, that might be the most utilitarian blade shape that they offer. If you're going to EDC a knife like this, I mean, it is, it's like the quintessential sheep's foot blade. It gets very, very thin behind the ears. These, you would think that the blade stock thickness on this is just crazy, but actually it's only about 145 thousandths. You can see here up against the PM2, it's roughly the exact same thickness. So considering it's a pretty tall blade, you get nice and thin behind the edge. This is their satin finish. You can see there, there's some horizontal hand rub satin going on on the flats. And then the swedge and the, um, the bevel that leads down to the cutting edge has a nice machine uh, belt satin finish on it. Really pretty. They have lots of different finishes. They've got mirror finish. They've got, um, they've got their acid wash finish. They've got, um, you know, I think some other variants of satin. They've got tumbled. A whole bunch of stuff. And then also for the blades, there's a harpoon with a recurve. There's a drop point. Um, I imagine so there's, there's at least one more, um, but you also have the option for compound grind. So if you like those big scallops, you know, back here towards the choil or out more towards the tip, they do that. You can get pretty crazy with that stuff. So lots and lots of options. They do have a nice, deep, generous finger choil here, which I really, really like. I feel like I can choke up on it. It's a meaningful choil. It's not just an enlarged sharpening choil, which I, I found a lot on knives here lately. It's like I can't fit my, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but my hands are pretty big. So I like to be able to get my finger in there and make it useful if I have to sacrifice some cutting edge. Now, this particular knife has 3.75 inches of cutting edge. So even if it wasn't that useful, I'd still have quite a bit of blade, but I'm thankful that they did it that way. Moving down to the scales, these particular scales are finished in what's, I, it's something like uh, like an underwater rock pattern, kind of like how water sort of erodes rock underwater. It looks really, really nice. They've anodized it like a deep matte purple, and then up at the peaks, they've anodized it like gold or bronze. That's really cool. This is just beautiful. Like, look at the little, let me use my uh, cam my new camera features here. Look at the little speckles that are coming out up against that gold and purple. I mean, it's this is really nice. And you know, honestly, as far as Olamet goes, I would say this is a pretty basic build. Like this is a this is very striking and beautiful. But this is, I mean, I want to emphasize, you know, and I if I was going to build an eye for the Olamet, mine would be very basic and simple too. Jeff and I have very similar tastes. I like this a lot. But if you want to go crazy with them you can go crazy. Hop on over there and, and check out the gallery on this or any of the other knives. I mean, you, you'll see what I mean by crazy. It's, it's nuts. Um, taking a look at the pivot on the show side, it's actually just a simple blue anodized um, uh, female side of the pivot. And then the adjustment side is on the other side. Your uh, screws that hold the titanium scales into the liners are in the middle. These have been anodized blue. Um, they are the little size, but you can see they're, they're deep. So as far as the small Torx head goes, you're gonna be able to get your tool far enough in there that you're not gonna to have to worry about it kind of twisting out or clicking out. That always bothers me. They have a, a nice bronze, deep bronze anodized rock pattern backspacer here. Now, um, the backspacer is another area of these knives. Is it, are you gonna stand up? Yeah, we're gonna stand up. The backspacer is another area of these knives where you can really kind of go crazy. They've got a lot of options. They've got a gear pattern. They've got this pattern. They've got kind of, it looks like raw gold, like in nugget form. Out, like if you, you know, like pulled it out of the ground or what, I don't know. I've never panned for gold, but it looks like gold nuggets. You know, they have a bunch of options there. So that's really cool. They also have options for the liners as far as anodizing um, or file work, you know, and also file work on the backspacer. This is really pretty. It's about a 60% or 65% backspacer. Um, I really like that. It really adds um, to the look and to the rigidity of the knife overall. Not that it needs it, but it's there. You can also see on the inside of the liners, a standard feature of Olamic knives or uh, the Olamic Wayfair is that the liners are actually jeweled. And you know what? I'm gonna run real quick to my kitchen and get my flashlight because the light on the camera is not doing anything justice. So let me get this flashlight. I want to show this off a little bit. But a standard feature when you get an Olamic Wayfair from these guys is that they jewel the liners. You can see there what I'm what I'm talking about. See the pattern that's kind of going all the way down the inside of the liners on that. It's nice. They don't have to do that, but they do. And it adds this nice little feature to the inside of the knife. And it's a lot easier to see when you're not dealing with 
you know, it's basically a floodlight that's pointed at my, um, my blinds to give this like kind of um, low white light, excuse me, that illuminates the um, tabletop here. But anyways, that's a really, really nice feature. I like that. Moving over to the other side, you can see here the sculpted pocket clip is a shape that on any other knife would just look weird. But <laughs> it's, to me, it's distinctive for a Wayfarer because, I mean, these are, this clip is on all their knives. Now, you can get them solid. I think they have ones with, like, holes cut out, which is how I would do it. Um, it can match. In this case, it does to the scales. It can be something completely different. It can be, uh, like, a high mirror polish. They, I mean, the, the clip has as many options just about, as, as far as I understand, as the scale. So you can go crazy with that. I think Jeff made a good choice here matching it to the scale, so that's pretty cool. Blue anodized screws there. That's really nice. Like I said, the liners are titanium. Uh, no steel lock bar insert on this, but it does not need an over-travel stop considering the liner presses up against the titanium scales. We do have a centered blade, an extremely solid lockup, no play up, down, left, or right. Something I really, really like is that the stop pin actually travels with the blade. Meaning that when it's in its locked out position, it's a stop pin, but it's also acting as, you know, considering how the liners are carved out to accept that pin, it's acting as a pressure mitigation um, lug, kind of like how they do it on the uh, XM18 or Strider knives or, or the ZT0562. Um, those lugs are there bracing on either side of the frame. They're just on the interior, not the exterior. Now, when you have a, a pin that just stays in one place, it kind of acts that way but it's not a part of the blade. So the blade can still kind of rock around on it. And sometimes in designs like that, you get a little blade play. On a design like this, there is no blade play whatsoever, which is really, really satisfying. So um, a build like this, you know, you're, you're looking at, uh, you know, between six and $800. It's really hard to pinpoint exactly, um, you know, how much money these are gonna cost. If I remember correctly, and maybe, I don't know, maybe Eugene will watch this video, that the gentleman who runs uh, the, the Olamic Cutlery Company, his name is Eugene. I have no idea if he'll watch this or not. I believe he told me, or whoever answered my email told me that the base price of a Wayfair was $650. I think that's right, I might be incorrect, but obviously, as with the most custom knives, these will go all the way up to probably five grand or maybe maybe even beyond it. I mean, if you're gonna go full Timascus and you're gonna do like a semi-reflective Damascus or Damasteel and all these, you know, then yeah, it's gonna get really, really expensive. But the cool thing is, is that he told me the lead time for the parts. He said, we're gonna be, you know, doing another run of Wayfarer parts between six and eight weeks from now, which means a couple of months. Um, and then they offered to um, help me out with my build in the meantime. So, you you know, I don't know exactly how long it would take to get a full custom knife from them, but it, it sounds like any for, like if you went for a Wayfarer right now, you'd probably be looking at between two and four months, which isn't bad. Now, if they had the parts in stock, maybe you'd only be looking at a month or two. You know, maybe maybe it's only like a couple of weeks once they've got everything put together. I have I don't know, but what was nice was as I sent the email in, they responded right away and said. Yep, we can do that. Yep, we know what you're talking about. Send us pictures for things. You know, if you want to add some more description, we'll try and mimic what it is that you're trying to have built. Like, they are ready to put together what you want them to do. I mean, it's not like they're like, I mean, yeah, you can request it, but I don't know if we can do it, you know? No, they were like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's what it's going to cost. This is the range you're looking at. You know, send us pictures of this texturing that you want, and we'll, we'll try and do that. And I was like, man, that's super cool. Plus, on top of that, now a lot of you, a lot of you left the moment I said that the, the cheapest one you could get was around $600 to $700. But for those of you who understand what goes into a custom knife and what you generally are looking at for costs associated to a really, really nice mid-tech or custom knife, uh, the base price for that is pretty amazing. I have seen and purchased mid-techs that cost substantially more than you know the prices he gave me and have had you know subpar fit and finish especially compared directly with the Olamic cutlery knives that I've handled which now uh, has been uh, two Wayfarers and a 247 so I've handled three of them um, that's kind of enough for me to see like you know where the consistencies are and if the quality is seems to be consistent across the board and it does I'm very impressed with these I'm very impressed with the price especially all the different services and options that they offer I think it's amazing this particular one is really cool, and it's not too far off from what I would do. Um, 
I just have a lot of like little teeny tiny things that I would want to uh, have done. And I don't want to ruin things because, you know, that knife is, it's still up in the air exactly what I want. I, I don't know 100%, but it is, in my mind, that knife is Excalibur. And I'll tell you um, that uh, Olamic Cutlery is a company that um, is, is one of the, um, you know, one of the companies that I would consider to, you know, to have that knife built for, I think um, they're awesome. So that's going to be pretty much all I can say about this knife. As far as whether or not I recommend it, this is a, just a really expensive knife. You know, for that reason alone, I can't recommend this knife to everybody. But I can, what I can say is that if you're looking for, um, you know, a custom knife and you want, uh, you know, whether you want the Wayfarer or the 247, you know, let's say you're looking for a large custom knife, you know, you're kind of on a budget, but you know what to expect for custom knives. Um, but you want something that is yours, you know, and, and you like to feel the big, you know, heft and solidity, you know, you want good ergonomics, which by the way, this thing locks in so well, you know, you want good flipping action, you want something that'll be a conversation piece and just kind of scratch that itch for you as far as a custom knife goes. Um, I can definitely recommend both the Lamic Cutlery and the Large Wayfarer. It's one of my favorite knives ever. This knife isn't going to go on my most recommended playlist because I, I just can't recommend it to everybody because it's just, it's not an everybody kind of knife. Um, but uh, uh, what I will do is I'm going to put it on my favorite knives of all time playlist because it just brings me happiness. This knife, its design, its look, and then, you know, all the other, you know, builds that you could do with, with the Wayfarer in general. It's just, you know, it's exciting, you know, to kind of think about. Um, but that's really, you know, that's about all I can say about this knife. Um, I think these are excellent, and I've had a lot of fun playing with this. By the way, um, I know the gentleman's first name. It's a Vagnino design. It's been that way for a long time. This particular one is in CTS XHP. They currently run CTS 204P, which is the carpenter equivalent to 20CV, which is made by Crucible or Bowler M390. Now I don't know if you have diff if you have multiple options as far as the blade steel goes, um, but I do know that you will at least get CTS 204P, which is what I would that's what I would pick anyway from everything they had listed there as far as past steels. Um, but uh, very very impressive, you know. Um, really really happy with that. So, anyways, guys, uh, that was kind of a ramble episode, um, but uh, I, I hope you guys at least found it mildly entertaining. Uh, if you did please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.